I made this video in 2011 when I started to ask myself, what's it all about? What's the point of our existence? Not just for me, but for everybody. And the conclusion I came to was to be happy. But what is happiness? What makes us happy? Even myself, I couldn't answer that question. What makes me happy? Quite an important question if I'd now decided this was the answer of life. So I started to do some reading and research to see what I could learn. I then developed a series of questions and went out and started interviewing people to find out what their happiness was. This first video gave the answers to what people thought the general public felt in terms of general happiness. Got your basic things like food, shelter, drink, you know, companionship probably. But then some people would rather be happier on their own. I think uh, people need to be able to be at peace with themselves, to accept themselves. The feeling that you're, you're at where you're at and that you're happy with that, that in itself, I think, is happiness. I think you need people around you that make you happy and really, like, listen if you have some worries or you want to do something in your life and really understand you. Happiness comes from not being an individual, but from engaging with other people. What I think you'll tend to find is that everyone around you, your friends, your, you know, your acquaintances and your associates, if they're all right and they're pretty happy and they're pretty positive about things, I think you will find that inevitably you will be as well. People think other things cause them to be happy. Um, they cause themselves to be happy. It's a choice. If people have made a choice to be happy, they will be happy, period. I remember seeing my son work, uh, walk for the first time. I mean, that was just instant happiness. Writing something, drawing something, playing a song, simple things. I think that people, most people are not happy when they're working. But uh, if, if, you can, if you like your work, you can be happy. Ultimate, well, ultimately, I'll say it's, it's chemicals being released into your brain. But again, if you're talking about the root cause, like the external factors that influence it, it depends on the person again. I d don't know if happiness yourself, if you would just get happy if someone was always doing something for you, it's something that you put into the process. Do you think that's the truth for the majority of people, that they're happy if they've done something for people? I think so, because that's where the word satisfaction comes from. basic things but that's that's not happening in, in Europe at the moment so um <laughs> well take something away from them that makes someone happy most of the time most of the time is when um, they don't get what they want people are uh, telling me do this do that and you don't you don't want to do it basically not being happy uh, in terms of where they are in life compared to where they'd rather be in life um, Stress, stressful time in your life. Stress is a big factor in being unhappy, I think. Some people make a choice to be happy whatever problems befall them. Some people, regardless of what delights befall them, will continue to be unhappy simply because they haven't made the choice to be happy. People who are very, very selfish, I find in my experience, are never happy. I hope so, but I think uh, today, the society is bringing a lot of pressure to people, like, how to educate themselves. I'm speaking hypothetically here, but I'm sure there are people who work 24-7, and that's their life. But they, without knowing it, without being, sort of, doing anything fun or being happy, uh, I think that can have an adverse effect on them. Yeah, most people know how to have fun. Um, but most people's idea of fun is short-term gratification. Um, for instance, uh, people who take drugs, um, rather than learn how to be happy, rather than learn how to have fun, they go for chemical fun. And, and any time someone goes down that road, it's, it, it always leads to one place. They completely lose control of their life. Alcoholic has, has fun while, while drinking for, for two weeks or something like that. For example, I like driving fast. My little brother, for example, doesn't. He hates it. 
that you'd rather go for a run. That's my idea of hell. I don't think you will find anyone who doesn't have anyone in their life that they love who is happy. I don't think so. I think, I think it's a factor that can cause you to feel happy, can help you to feel happy and content. Um, but I don't think it's ne I don't think it's really necessary. Mm, platonic love and also romantic love. Yeah. Yeah, it's really nice when you're having a good relationship with the companion. Uh, yeah, no, hundred percent. I mean, to be honest, in my personal opinion, I think that's why we're here. I mean, I remember being single for two years and just walking around and enjoying a really nice walk and feeling happy. So, you know, a black and white answer would be no, you don't. But I also recognize that when you do have love in your life, that walk just becomes, you know, a little better. So it definitely adds a lot to life, yeah, for sure. Most people's outlook on life is probably positive, I think. I would like to think, anyway. Mostly negative, because it's easier. I hope positive, but uh, yeah, I, I really uh, see it in myself and uh, in my um, co-workers and friends that some we, we, we tend to talk about these um, uh, things that uh, this is negative and this is not good and only problem is that with this thing and... Most people are probably just a little bit south of neutral most of the time, I think. Um, Classically in the UK, if you ask someone how they are, instead of saying excellent, divine, fantastic, they'll say not bad. For the good of mankind, you'd want to say that the positives outweigh the negatives, or at least there are more positive people, otherwise, I suppose, inevitably, that would lead to a spiral of decline, if not. A lot of the time, we make opinions out of uh, what other people say and these other people don't necessarily have the first hand experience to back up what they say as well. So it could be quite misleading and yeah, quite dangerous in times actually. Yeah, I, I think the media does. It's how it portrays as well the standard of living of the rest of the population of the country, for example. I think so. It makes people scared a little bit and, and people forget about like um, uh, what are the real problems. Uh, media brings up these like superficial things to get happiness but you don't really need those. You have to figure them out yourself. We attend to bad news because bad news, if we know about it, enables us to protect ourselves from whatever the bad thing is we're hearing about it. Uh, but if you subject yourself to that on an ongoing basis, i.e. listen to the media, um, I think it's very, very likely that, that it will have a, a depressing and a subduing effect on one's mood. In a way, yes, because you know, something I saw in the States that was really um, interesting to me um, was that whole, after 9-11, they had this code system, and I forgot all the several different colors they had for that. But they, um, let's just say, code orange, I think, was just the one right under the code red. And um, whenever that came up, people got a little eerie, you know, like, you know, tense. And, um. So what I discovered is the media can scare and depress you, but yet people's happiness seemed to be linked to other people having positive, stable and loving people around you. Is that the answer? I decided to ask these two doctors who had done some research into the topic. If your happiness depends on other people, you've got a problem. You're, you're linking your happiness to other people, which means you're saying to yourself, I do not have control of my happiness. And if people are saying that, they're also saying to themselves and you, I haven't chosen happiness. I am waiting for happiness to be done unto me, rather than for me to do it to myself. So if, you're, if, if people think happiness is dependent on other people, then they are definitely setting themselves up for a lifetime of problems. And I think certainly the sociological research that I've read often focuses on how 
the seemingly happiest people have a very stable field of people around them. So they, they feel like they're part of a community, they feel like they're part of a family, they don't necessarily have to be related to the people within that family, but they feel they, they are part of something where they belong and have a very certain and defined role. In the next video, we'll look at the biology of happiness. So, till then, keep smiling.